All right, back here on Grandstand Court, we have a Challenger League quarterfinal matchup. You have the Brooklyn Aces taking on the Utah Black Diamonds. So winner of this match, we will have, you and I, Chad, will have later, because the winner of this match gets the Chicago Slice in the semifinals at three o'clock local time. But again, Dominic Catalano alongside me, as always, Chad Edwards on the call for you. Chad, women's doubles to start off. The ever so important women's doubles match here in and at MLP. What are you thinking of this matchup here between the Black Diamonds and the Aces? Well, we saw, we had the opportunity of seeing both of these teams mm -hmm. out here on Grandstand Court yesterday. For the Black Diamonds and Esquivel and McMillan, they had success being aggressive. We saw a couple of really nice backhand holds from Esquivel, switching it up between down the line and through the middle. So we'll look for her to continue with that one today. For Carr and Gate and Leach, a little bit of a rough start yesterday, but they found their groove as the day went on. Gaten Leach, easy power in her swing, but at times can go up for a little too much. And that gets her into control, and those errors start creeping in. So I'll be interested to see the adjustment that they made through the day yesterday. But as you said, both these teams fighting for the chance to play again at 3 o'clock. They'll take on an undefeated Chicago Slice team. Neither one of these teams had fa has faced the Slice, so it'll be a new matchup. There's your one seed, the Chicago Slice. Your two seed is the Bay Area Breakers. They both have buys, and they're on to the semifinals. All right. Okay. Talking with Corinne Carr and Sarah Gaten Leach before this matchup started. And they said yesterday was about survival, today is about thriving. <laughs> so yesterday was survive, today is thrive. And so that's their mentality coming into this matchup here against the veterans Esquivel and McMillan. So it was some early on dream breakers on the side of the Premier League. We had so, dream breakers <laughs> in three out of the six. Yes, three to six. So half, at least half of them. We don't know about that. I don't know about the other two. Well, we had we, we had we had three out of four that we could see. Yeah, we didn't see courts uh, three so and four. The fives came out on top of the Milwaukee uh, of Milwaukee, and Milwaukee was up with ball in hand, 2017. And who ended it for the Clowns, otherwise known as the Fives? <laughs> it was Anna Lee I'm Waters guess Anna Lee. on court, ended it. And then behind us, huge upset. As New York was up 2-0, Vegas comes back, wins both mixed doubles matches, and then the Dream Breaker, and then we had our own Dream Breaker here on the grandstand court. But it's all about challenger quarterfinals here. The Utah Black Diamonds taking on the Brooklyn Aces. Women's doubles here. And we are underway. A good spot from McMillan that. Put on, putting the pressure on Gate and Leach. So similar to what we saw in the matchup here yesterday, Gaten Leach, the early target for the Black Diamonds. That ball sailing long, but Carr playing it. And a nice start here for Utah. Uh, 
That ball sitting up just too high off the paddle of Esquivel. Gaten Leach is always going to put a good swing on that one. She missed it. Ooh, yes. Just a little over hit there by Gaten Leash, but that's because of the great defense from McMillan and Esquivel trying to end it there. Yeah, she went for a little too much. Paddle laid back and that face pointed to the sky. She slid through that ball when she went to put it away. You got a no. ball change happening. Yeah, good spot there. She didn't overhit that one, but she picked the right spot. Clash of paddles between Esquivel and McMillan. A little tentative on that drive from Gate and Leach. The miss hit third from Esquivel. We could hear it here. She miss hits, but it was perfect, right? Ends up being perfect. She'll take that 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, that ball rolled in as well. It's a good stepping in the middle from Esquivel right there. Read that nicely. Millen getting twisted up there. She sat forehand first and then Gaten Leach pinning her there on the backhand side. Oh, nice ball from Corinne Carr going sideline there. Oh, hesitant again, Chad. Yeah, well, that one came up much higher than what we have been seeing those balls out here on Grandstand Court. Most of them have been sliding through. Yeah. 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 All you Mich all you Michelle Esquivel just getting on top of that one. It came out flat. Read it well. Bit of inconsistency on both teams so far. Yeah. Millen getting fired up. Just seeing some too many unforced errors from Gaten Leach early on. Right we'll miss it there from McMillan. As Utah one point away from an end change here. We'll change ends at 11. That's good talk there from McMillan telling Esquivel to go. No hesitation there. And an 11-6 lead here for Utah. And Chad, you talked about how just a slow start, kind of some unforced errors here, but it is a five point lead here for Utah though. Yeah, it's very similar to what we saw yesterday in a lot of these challenger matches. Typically the, the teams that were getting down early were just struggling with those unforced errors early on. And that was always the difference in those matches that we saw. 
where it wasn't so much the winners, it was more the inconsistency. And we just got delivered bar top stools so we can sit down now. Good spot there from Gaten Leach. Esquivel not quite pinching the middle as much. and she kind of figured it out here, Chad, as they changed ends, and I called her out on it, and she's fixed it. <laughs> Great job by Gaten Leach. Usually we get called out for being too loud. So maybe she heard you. Good spots there from both McMillan and Esquivel. Tough balls for Carr to pick up. Pick up. Wow. What a scramble there from the Black Diamonds as Brooklyn had them on the ropes, but they dug out of that hole, end up with the point. I expected McMillan to pull the trigger on that forehand that she got and that little bit of a dead dink from Carr. But. Yeah. Good talk from Gaten Leach to tell Carr to leave that. And they're now back within three. Ball, but I'm so impressed that you could have shot a video on how to work yourself Textbook through transition, transition area. That's exactly what I was watching as well. Corinne Carr, baseline, then three feet in, and six feet in, and then she got to the kitchen line. job and Chad what I'm seeing now in the second half of this game is I'm seeing so much better communication between Carr and Gaten Leach. Yeah absolutely. Gaten Leach being more I don't know what was going on with Esquivel right there. They were, She's kind of they were talking about someone saying something I believe. Because Cassidy even said you didn't hear that. I didn't catch it. I didn't hear it either. Wow, nice angle there from Gaten Leach. Yeah, we talked about that easy power from Gaten Leach early on. And when she's she's starting to be more aggressive in the middle, making her swing more compact. She doesn't need to have that big backswing to, to generate the power. And we saw that from that overhead right there. Just out in front, create the angle. All right, so quick little powwow for the aces here as they have a, or a one point deficit. The timeout was from the Black Diamonds as Utah trying to slow the momentum of Brooklyn down. Nice. 
good. So tall. Perfect spot from Carr. Setting up like she was going to go down the line, drawing Esquivel there and finding that hole in the middle. And Carr just getting underneath that last one, but a good job of neutralization by Michelle Esquivel to get that ball at Carr's feet. Well, that was a big look. I almost fumbled it. <laughs> Goodness, that ball just a little flat from Esquivel that. Now all tied up here. Oh, good balls from McMillan, really applying the pressure to Gaten Leach there. Going right into the body. There's not enough seats on the Utah bench over there. Oh, oh. tough ball. That was the only thing she could do is sitting right up yeah. against the net. That's one where you flip it up and then go and blow the ball over. Two point lead for Utah. Right back in it. Maybe a little early on the trigger pull from McMillan, but great job by McMillan and Esquivel to get back in that point. But Gaten Leach and Carr now back within one. Oh, good spot from McMillan. Carr almost got it back. McMillan questioning if that ball was going to go out or not. She tentatively hit it, catching it late. Gaten Leach looking at Carr going, we're going to win this. Let's go. That's a great setup by Corinne Carr, Chad. Yeah, she said it looked like she was just going to punch it back, but ended up pulling the trigger off the back foot, catching McMillan and Esquivel by surprise. Just when you thought they got it to neutral, that's when Esquivel pulls the trigger right there. Kind of shocked Gaten Leach. Yeah, a tough spot there. She was going short court. And again, another step in and rip from Esquivel. This time jamming up Carr. So time out here from Brooklyn. We are frozen on both sides now at 2018. It'll be side out scoring the west, rest of the way. The west of the, the rest of the way. And so <laughs> as we come back in, Brooklyn calling this time out. Gaten, Leach, and Carr have battled their way back. They were down 11 6 on the end change, have battled their way back, have got to tied. Um, but now it is Esquivel, McMillan, and Utah pulling away by two. We'll see what Brooklyn can do out of this timeout to slow the momentum down, but it'll be a game point on the paddle of Olivia McMillan right now.
Oh, oh it's the smart. angle. Smart. Very smart there from Sarah Gaten Leach. Big power on the one before McMillan getting it back this time. A little change up in angle. A bit of an opportunity squandered there for the Aces. That miss into the net from Gaten Leach. And reverse the other way. Yeah. A little bit of tightness, a little bit of hesitation. Such good defense are McMillan and Esquivel. Yeah, Gate and Leach getting all twisted up with her feet there on that one. Big car hit an out ball. Yes. Wow, I mean, what a way to end it. You know, think you're exactly right. Both of us kind of tapping each other going, that was an out ball that she played, but it's a 21-18 victory for Utah. Chad, what was the difference here for Utah to kind of pull away and end this and get that very important women's doubles point? Well, I think it was just the, the pressure that they applied from the get-go, you know, got up early. Fought off a little bit of a run from the Aces, but they never let go of the aggression. So it was always constant pressure, even in some of those spots where they didn't come out on top. Well, it's a 1-0 lead here for the Black Diamonds. As you guys can see, men's doubles up next. The boys are warming up. They are next. Here we'll take a quick timeout, and we'll be back with that men's doubles matchup. Don't go anywhere. Oh, oh.
Hey, have some fun. Yes, Start sir. fast, baby. Let's go. Start fast. Men's doubles challenger quarterfinal matchup. Game number one going to the Utah Black Diamonds by a score of 21-18. Michelle Esquivel and Olivia McMillan coming out on top of that over Sierra Gaten Leach and Corinne Carr. So for the Brooklyn Aces, it's Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow. will be taking on Rob Cassidy and Spencer Smith for the Utah Black Diamonds. Yeah, boys. And I still do like the Black Diamonds jerseys, as I said yesterday and pointed out. But it'll be Greg Dow to serve to start as Brooklyn trying to even this up at a game apiece. Yeah, I don't mind the reach in there from Dow, but just coming out a little too flat. That paddle head under it just a little bit more and brush up. Yeah. Oh, what a shit from Spencer Smith. Spot from Nonnery, but too sure if Dow kind of blocked Nonnery's view on that one. Again, again. Did twice, twice in a row for Dow. Just standing too tall there as well. You see his legs completely straight. Yeah. Wow, this is exactly how the women's match started where Esquivel and McMillan had a 3-0 lead on Gaten, Leach, and Carr. Foot fault. What do you think? Size 14? Minimum. <laughs> Dow's a very big boy. That's uh, nice ball. Good adjustment, right, Chad? Yeah, excellent adjustment there. Didn't try to go for too much. Brushed up the back of that one. Used the spin instead of the power. Bit of hesitation there from Nonnery. Good spot again from Dow on that inside out flick. Nice angle. Right angle, Come on. That spin created by Nonnery there, just keeping that ball down to when it quite bleh, once it got to Cassidy. Geez, that one didn't even want to come in. Nice pull from Cassidy, I like it, but coming back on the counter from Nunnery, he clips the tape. Yeah, good reach in there again from Cassidy, but Good counter attack from Dow. Cassidy just needs to pick the spot a little better. Yeah. Uh, 
Good setup there from Spencer Smith as he finally creates a hole in the middle, punches that ball through. And I was talking last night with some players and saying how Greg Dow reminds me of a, a bigger, I mean taller Rob Cassidy. He's got great hands, blocks everything out in front. Nice, right? They're right on cue, right? It's just short and sweet. He's just a taller version, I think, of Rob Cassidy. Very scrappy, uh, right-sided player. So they have a lot of similarities between the two. Does he slide around on the court as much as Rob Cassidy does? I've seen Dow get dirty. <laughs> He's gritty. He, he's just a grinder. I love his game. Oh, wow! What an ATP! When he, when he hit that, I thought it was going long. I thought it was too. We can't see the baseline from here. Oh, he drops it within a foot of the baseline. Oh, nice get. Oh, and just wide. What? So that whole point at the, in the, at the towards the end was set up by a no look cross court ding from Cassidy. He had Dow leaning middle. He goes no look to the sideline and had Dow on the move end up with a pop up. That ball just deep, so it gives the Black Diamonds the lead at the end change here, up 11-8. So now Brooklyn Aces in a hole here. They're down one game to, to none and down by three here in men's doubles. A spot in the semifinals against the Chicago Slice on the line. What are you seeing from the Aces that they possibly may need to do here, Chad, to change things up? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see them take a couple more chances some calculated risks, kind of put a little bit of pressure on the Black Diamonds, but it has to be the right spot. Cassidy and Smith, both excellent counter-attackers and blockers getting those balls back. But if they create the hole first, it's where they'll have some success. Where the Black Diamonds are having success are there, is the fact that they're putting the pressure on the Aces right now. So as we come back in from the end change, it's a three-point lead for the Utah Black Diamonds. Oh, and just long as Cassidy runs through the kitchen on that, it did bounce, so he was safe. Tries to flip that through the middle and goes just long. Nunnery knew it off his paddle. As soon as he hit it, he stood, stood straight up. He knew it was just short. He just gets on top of it a little too much. Cassidy just needs to punch that forward, and that's a winner for him. He's all over it.
Good hands by Rob Nunnery right there on the speed up from Spencer Smith. So here we go again. We saw this yesterday, Chad. Um, in the match that was on championship court, I was on the sideline. The opposing team, Atlanta, challenged Greg Dow's serve. And they challenge it now here again to see if both of his feet are off the ground. He gets up on his toes, and they're going to challenge and see if it's a football. Yesterday, it was upheld. So let's see here what we got as Utah will be challenging. So that was like kind of the talk of everything yesterday too, that that got challenged and it got over and it got upheld, the challenge. So it was very interesting. You don't see that very much on serves. So we'll see here what we got. But it has gotten tight here, 12-11 Utah Black Diamonds lead. And even if it doesn't get called here, Chad, and upheld, do you think it kind of messes with the psyche of a Greg Dow and Rob Nunnery who are kind of coming back into this? Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, when, when you've got something like your sub question, you think about how many people get the serving yips, and it's not from emotion, it's all mental. Mm -hmm. So now if he's thinking about his feet and what have to happen with this, yeah, it can it can it can screw up with the uh, with your head and the mental aspect. Well, so his, both these feet were on the ground. Well, at least one foot was on the ground. And the Brooklyn Aces owners over there screaming, "Wasted challenge! Wasted challenge!" So it's it's getting testy here with a sh. So here, here we go, Chad. So it's getting chippy out here. Is Cassidy now asking our referees if the owners can say whatever they want? Oh, I think Nunnery potentially hit a ball that was going wide there. Wait. Pressure from Smith. Dow and Nunnery not able to get up to that kitchen line. Good hands there from Rob Nunnery on the speed up from Cassidy. Looking down at the camera there, almost if the camera was in his way, but I mean, I think he had plenty of space. He just kind of pulled it back too much and hits the post. Yeah, good pressure. Nunnery a little late on that one. He's on that, Chad. He's right there. He's hitting it clean. Left 
handed there. A little, little bit of a, um, I don't want to say a mess in the middle of that <laughs> point, but it's kind of all over bit. the place. Such a good point by Rob Cassidy there. Not getting overly aggressive, waiting for that right moment. Nunnery telling Dow to not speed those balls up there. Watch it. I don't think Cassidy got on the ground on that one. Yeah, that was he, the he, issue. He was on at least one knee. <laughs> I think he needs to get on two and it'd be all right. Great counter there from Rob Cassidy. Instead of just blocking that, he punches that, right? And he gets that with some pressure at the feet of Greg Dow. Good leave right there. How easy is it to play that ball, Chad? Oh, I mean, extremely easy. And, and you talk about Dow being a Tall and large player, it's easy to hit that ball up at the chest. Counter, Greg Dow with the hands out in front, short and sweet. That's a textbook counter block. Tough time to miss an easy dink like that one, but a good spot in the left foot. Verbal, warning, verbal for warning for Mr. Dow. Dow. Yeah. He accepts it and apologizes for it. <laughs> wow. Inside out dotting the line. That's, That's how you make up for the verbal warning. That was very close. It was. <laughs> Side out scoring the remainder of the way. Pressure. Dow getting a little tense there, a little tight. Cutting that swing off. Spot from, from Smith, but excellent adjustment from Nonnery. Spot to the left foot of Dow by Cassidy. Ate him up a little bit. Dow letting that ball get too close to the body. And then we missed the serve on the way back. Can't have that here. It is no point giving up, but to get back in it, you do not want that. And then a miss return. So a couple of errors there at the end. Giving the aces 
the 21-18 win. Let's go. Thanks, and tying it all up one apiece. So we are, like you said, Chad, all tied up one apiece, heading into mixed. We'll see what those lineups are. As soon as we can get those to you, we will. But stick with us here and have two mixed doubles matches coming up for you next.
here on Grandstand Court. It's all about mixed doubles. The Utah Black Diamonds and the Brooklyn Aces all tied at one game apiece, headed to mixed doubles. A spot in the semifinals against the Chicago Slice on the line. Good hands from Cassidy. Yeah, it's a great start there from Cassidy. You hear Nunnery on the sideline going, smart, Greg, smart, meaning let's not speed up right at Rob Cassidy. There's Cassidy on the ground for yeah. the first time today. Yeah, good hands from Dow. Cassidy trying to go for a little too much on that second speed up. And it is an interesting lineup. We talked about it yesterday, and they played this way yesterday, too, with McMillan and Cassidy together, two lefties. You typically don't see that a lot. If you have lefties and righties, you like to play them together so that middle's closed off. Oh, another left-handed block there from Dow. Oh, he's in the kitchen, though. No. Gate leash didn't get out of the way. And he, he end up tossing his paddle on the side. <laughs> Greg looks at our referee and goes, was I in? Good move from Dow. Cassidy tried to match it, but overdid it. That's the spot if you're going to speed it up at Cassidy. You got to go with that hip. Anything out in front of him, he's going to get. Yeah. Most, most people. Most players, you don't want to allow them to get extended. You want to go into the body. Cassidy wants to stay compacted in the body. You got to try to, get, like you said, go hips or get him extended on that speed up. That's a good little flick on the forehand there from Gate and Leach. Looked like McMillan wasn't expecting it right there. It was close. We saw yesterday with DC a point being overturned because of a early celebration. McMillan there. Cassidy, I mean, that's a baseball slide into a pickup right there. Unbelievable from Rob Cassidy. Good step in. Coming across, hitting that forehand with a hard angle back into the body of Dow. Movement of Dow is thrown off the Tommy of Gate and Leach just a little bit. A little long there on the 
return from Gao and Utah back within one. So Dow let it go because he thought it was going to go out. Gaten Leach let it go because she thought Dow was going to hit it, and it drops in. Yeah, good setup and good spot from Gaten Leach on that one. Again, that's the speed up at the body of Cassidy. Too good right there. His hands are too good. And McMillan's there, but Cassidy full extension. Tough ball for him to get. set up there from McMillan. Took a couple of balls to the middle and then kept pushing Dow. Wider and wider, Dow not able to bring that one back inside the court from around the post. <laughs> he sat down in, in his position right as that ball floated and Gaten Leach just dotted him a strike right under the paddle. One knee. Down the block. McMillan caught with her feet still moving there. All tied at 10. At this point, we'll switch ends. Just out. So an 11 or 10 lead here for McMillan and Cassidy. But it's as tight as it's gonna get here, Chad. It's just, and no one's wanted to pull away here. Some good defense from Rob Cassidy. He's been on the ground a couple times. Greg Dow, same thing, but what's gonna be the difference maker here in the end to get this match and be sitting pretty 2-1? Yeah, I like the aggression by the men. However, I think they need to kind of control it a little bit more. Like I said earlier, the movement by Dow kind of throwing off the timing um, and the balance of Gate and Leach a little bit. And the same for, for Cassidy and McMillan. The excessive movement, although it's creating a little bit of pressure, kind of hinders the rhythm that you're looking for. So I'd like to see both these guys trust their ladies a little bit more to set them up and then at the right spot come in be aggressive. Yeah, she's Kaden Leach not gonna let Cassidy get a hold of that one and get it back over. She punishes that ball into the ground. All tied at eleven. Good spot, going across the body of Cassidy was Dow. Even though Cassidy got a good paddle on it, just that angle forced the ball to go wide. All right, let's go ahead and show you how to get it. Such a good read from Dow as he was stepping in the middle before McMillan even hit that. Yep. Right on the baseline. I think they're going to challenge it though.
So Brooklyn is calling it in, but they're going to challenge it that it's out. So they're going to use their challenge here to call that ball. I see right here. The ball looks to be right on the line. Don't, say don't, don't say a word. I would say it's inside the line. Oh, here we go. You don't get extra points for being inside the line. <laughs> it's either in or out. Well, you said right on. I am yeah. I'm just have to disagree with you. <laughs> believe the call will be in. Quick review, which I like. So point to Utah. It's 12-13 as we come back in. McMillan catching Dow creeping in the middle right there. Goes behind him a little bit. And all tied at 13. Spot from McMillan and good change of pace there from Cassidy throwing off the balance of Dow. And nice jump from Cassidy right there. He wanted to on the first ball from Dow, but didn't read it well enough. But reads that second one nicely. And Utah takes a two point lead. Both Cassidy and McMillan wanted to call it out <laughs> as they turned around with their heads around like, ah, oh, no, that is in. Cassidy almost lost his head on that ball. Good spin from McMillan. Ball kind of kicks up a little bit on Dow. McMillan fired up after that. So timeout here from Brooklyn as Utah takes a three-point lead here, Chad. Good timeout here, in my opinion, as you have a fired up Olivia McMillan and Rob Cassidy. What are your thoughts in the huddle here if you're Brooklyn? Uh, I think it's going back to kind of what we talked about leading into and at the end change here for this first mixed doubles matchup. Dow's trying to do a little too much there. You saw him come all the way over in front of Gate and Leach and then McMillan going back cross court to him. Stay within yourself. Don't try to press. We see Dow now talking with Nunnery. I think that would, well, I think that we're kind of having a discussion on whether they move Gate and Leach over to the left and Dow becomes on the right. Which is something you can do in MLP during timeouts or end changes. Off 
the tape. Cassidy gets it. And Dow is on it, but unfortunate for him, clips the tape. And it's a four point lead here for Utah. Yeah, that's not going to come back no. when Gaten Leach gets that type of ball. We saw Dow catch himself before he ran across in front of Gaten Leach on that one. job again from Gaten Leach putting tons of pressure on after he dug after Cassidy dug that first one out she's leaving nothing to chance now 16. Even Hood, Cassie in the middle of that one. Say shoot, he knew he was out of position. A three point lead here for Utah. stay on his feet there. He jumped and then ends up miss hitting that. Up there on both sides, but McMillan and Cassidy with the better counter attacks. So it'll be game point number one for Utah. Ooh, they don't have a challenge. I don't think they have a challenge. They right? don't. Because they lost the challenge before. Oh, I think I think Rob's gonna challenge his own call right here. Out of good sportsmanship to say well. <laughs> uh, oh that's that's in. It's actually in. It's actually, uh -oh. that, that ball is in. Wow. So Utah, it sounds like right now, Utah is going to challenge. They, they called it out. But Utah, I believe, is going to use their challenge. Or no? I have no idea. I'm gonna say wow. that. So they're in discussion right now. I really so they're still in discussion whether or not this is going to be challenged or not. So. So there's still a discussion with the Utah team. <laughs> Who's ch who?
Yes, they are. We're still, so, so, still going back and forth here so, so, about whether it's a challenge, whether it's not. So the rule is that the captain of the team has to initiate the challenge. The captain of the team is Michelle Esquivel. And she's and she is not going sticking to. to her guns and she is not challenging it. Guys, go to your go, go. Yeah, it's all said you're gonna challenge guys. It's sports now. Who so it looks like there will be no challenge. We did see the replay, so you guys at home do know. I'm being overruled by my captain and my So uh, we just heard from Cassidy right there that he was willing to challenge it. But he said he was overruled by his captain and his owner, so So there is no challenge. Game number one of mixed doubles goes to the Utah Black Diamonds. So they will finish warming up here in the second in the second mixed doubles match. We'll watch and see when we come back here what happens with that last and final mixed doubles match. If we're going to a dream breaker or if Utah is going to move on. I already asked you if you can please not allow them to talk to me, and you're allowing it. I asked you. Shadra, are you warming up? So we are back here on Grandstand Court. Dominic Catalano and Chad Edwards here on court. And I don't know if there's still some debate, Chad, about what's going on here, but we'd had a full warm up with Esquivel and Smith. And it looked like Nunnery and Carr were ready too. And so we will, I believe, be ready to go here momentarily. Tough way to end that first mixed doubles match, Chad. 
but we were you know told the rules are um, as written for MLP is that any challenge has to be initiated by the captain of the team the captain of Utah is Michelle Esquivel and Michelle Esquivel uh, denied the challenge so no challenge and we will be moving on to the second mixed doubles matchup here on grandstand court with a spot in the semifinals against the Chicago Slice on the line. So Nunnery and Corinne Carr are going to have to figure out what they need to do here to force a dream breaker because it's their only way to move forward here, Chad. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with the challenges, it kind of goes back to what we've spoken about in a couple of these matchups. If you use that challenge too early or, you know, potentially not in a situation that you can't fight your way out of, now you run into this where you get to toward the end of it in a in a very critical situation you don't have any challenges so the timing of those challenges is just as important as anything else but yeah nunnery and car definitely have a lot of work to do here to be able to fight their way into the dream breaker <laughs> All right, we so hear Dow talking with the referees now as far as how did the referees not see that that ball was inside the line? But again, the position of the referees are to watch the kitchen, not the baselines. So still, I think we're, are we missing a Corinne Carr? I do not see her on court as of right now. There still is discussion here, Chad, <laughs> about this last call. Uh, yeah. So, again, we've explained to you guys the rules that only the captain can initiate the challenge. The challenge was not initiated by Michelle Esquivel, thus the match, or the game, is over. And we should be moving on to our second mixed doubles matchup. The issue here is, is that we are taking a lot of time in between games here. I know the players don't want this either because they end up getting cold as well. That's the last thing they need. Chad, you're rubbing your head. I'm, I'd I'm, either, just, I'd, I'm just I'd, blocking the sun. Think, uh, <laughs> I was thinking I might see smoke come out of your ears if you didn't have your headphones on. As my two, as my two favorite Aussies are in the same place at the same time, Morgan Evans is here as well. So I, I think they're the only two Aussies I know. So. <laughs> well, you guys in Sarah Burr. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. But we are set and ready to go. Corinne Carr, Rob Nunnery taking on Michelle Esquivel and Spencer Smith. The Brooklyn Aces need this match here, or this game here, to force the Dream Breaker. I'm anticipating some, some little, 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 chirping. Thi little thick tension here, possibly. Little, little chirping. We'll see what happens here as we... So we are all set and ready to go. Corinne Carr and Sarah Ansbury in the back. All right, so Carr and Nunnery on the far end. Esquivel and Smith on the near side. But I'm not too sure what's going on back here. So it looks like Karen Carr is a little emotional right now as well, getting comforted by Sarah Ansbury back there. Hey, let's go, let's go. 
If anybody's be able to shake this off and get back in game mode, it is Corinne Carr. There she is, right off the bat. Corinne Carr stepping up nicely. And good start here for Brooklyn. Oh, that ran along the net yeah. for about four feet. Oh, nice hands. Oh, you got to fire it up Rob Nunnery right now. <laughs> He's ready to go. Good move there by Smith, but Nunnery able to get a paddle on it and Nobody home after the poach from Smith. Okay, here we go, Let's go. Right yeah, good attacks there from Smith. Carr able to fight one off, but just too great of an angle there for Nonnery to try to keep in. process there from Carr. She fought off a couple of tough balls, but not the best ball to try to speed up. Oh, we got it. A little too much there from Nunnery and think in the middle of that point. Trying to make something happen, I, I appreciate that, but there was a couple that were just low enough. Let Corinne Carr take that and work you back in the point. Yeah, heavy top spin there from Spencer Smith. In reality, that is a ball from Carr that would typically go out, but not when you crank it as hard as Smith did right there. Just relentless attack there from Spencer Smith and Michelle Esquivel and Utah extending their lead to 6-3. Now the good leave there from Kant. So we saw that one a little bit flatter from Esquivel. Didn't have the amount of topspin that Smith did earlier. Great angle, right, from Spencer Smith. A little inside out forehand. Smith completely off the ground there. He kind of jammed himself up a little bit as well. Just needs to stay balanced there, and he has that attack. Good pressure there from Smith. Yeah, Nunnery 
trying to tell Carr to let that ball bounce. She plays it though. And a four point lead here for Utah. That's good ball from Lundry on the backhand, Chad. Yeah, good depth. Just hit through the ball. Didn't try to create too much spin or angle. defense and then the speed up from Ka. Worked her way back into that point exceptionally well. Got up to the kitchen line and pulled the right ball right into the armpit of Smith, but then Nunnery dumps his serve into the net. And if at any time you want to dump your serve in the net when you're in rally scoring, that is not the right time. Guy's yeah, just sitting on that back heel right there. I know he's leaning forward, but it's when you're just leaning with the, the front on the top side, top half. Got to get on those toes. Carr tried to cover as much court as she could there, but the attack from Esquivel and Smith just relentless. So the Black Diamonds go into the end change up 11-8, leading 2-1 in the match. So Carr and Nunnery, they're in it. It's only three, not a lot. Is there anything you're seeing that they need to change here as far as this match goes to see if they can get into the Dream Breaker? Yeah, I mean, right now they're weathering the storm pretty well from Smith and Esquivel. I'd like to see them put a little bit more pressure on Esquivel. I think out of the two between Esquivel and Smith, she's more the one that will crack uh, and kind of give up some of those errors right there. Yeah, the only, I was going to say, the only way that they can do that is to, to keep S Smith honest by going behind him and then isolating Esquivel. Yeah, I agree with you there. It's kind of isolating Esquivel a little bit, force her into some mistakes. Spencer Smith playing with a lot of aggression right now, and he's been playing very clean for the most part. And so trying to keep the ball away from him as much as they can, try and force a mistake from Esquivel. Be Spencer Smith serving as we return back into play after the end change, 11-8, Utah lead. Good spot there from Nonnery. Esquivel potentially a little ambitious, trying to poach that ball in the middle there. Sun. It went right in the sun. Smith had to let it drop. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation there from Carr coming forward and almost overran the ball. Putting that ball at her feet. Yeah, good. <laughs> I, was gonna say, yeah, I no, thought she was going to play it. Don't hit it. She just continued to pull her paddle back <laughs> and away from the ball, but you and I were both like, no. It's gonna go. Yep, let's go. Just short. Thought it was gonna go over there, but Smith going corner to corner there, continuing to apply that pressure. Good drive and then good flick. 
coming up quickly on the car block. That's tough to keep that ball in right there. Spencer Smith does a great job. It's kind of the power of carbon fiber. Yeah. That ball ends up in the Margaritaville VIP tent. Ball that from Esquivel. Damn, I wish I could have Okay. That's a, that's okay. a good speed up, right? By current cars, exactly what you were going to say, I think, too. But what the best part about that was she got that down. She got yeah. on top of it and it down at the shins of Spencer Smith. Here come the Brooklyn Aces. Just out of the reach of Corinne Carr. Yeah, Nunnery not able to get a very good swing on that speed up. Smith stepping in and creating the angle behind Carr. Good eye there from Carr and good pressure from Nunnery stepping in and taking over there at the kitchen line. This hit from Spencer Smith ends up to be a winner. Nunnery was expecting that with much more pace. Oh, it's just wide. Just missing that. So Brooklyn gonna challenge the call on the sideline. That that ball was in. Look out, we'll see here is ball just don't say a word. I am not commenting, I'm not making a comment. I cannot because it will get it would have the different outcome than what I say anyway. So it's it's as close as you can get, but <laughs> from the the looks of it, Corinne Carr trying to break her back. Look, looking at our screen here to see the replay, but I think it looks possibly out. Zoom in. Great camera work here by our crew. Let me get that right there. That's the one and looks out. So call stands. Wow, Chad, you might have almost been right. If I had have said it was out, it would have been in. Correct. So. Just, just leaving it to the referees. So four point lead here for Utah. Trying to move on to the semifinals. Good spot from Nunnery and good reach in. Coming over, taking that ball in front of Carr and creating the ball back behind Smith. Wow. Didn't split step soon enough. Now he tried to come up quickly and apply that pressure and Esquivel recognizing it, just going behind the backhand side. That's a nice drop cross court there from Corinne Carr. Now they got to put a couple together here to get a little closer. Oh, 
Ooh, Again, so many of those hard returns we've seen not come up. So a shot against the Chicago Slice in the semifinals on the line for Utah on this point. That ball will go wide and Utah is moving on to the semifinals where they will face off against the Chicago Slice later on this afternoon. Brooklyn, a valiant effort here, but a 21-16 victory for the Utah Black Diamonds, and they will move on by a score of three to one. Congratulations to them. We'll see that matchup later. Chad Edwards and I will be on that call on championship court at 3 p.m. local time. A little over two hours from now. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll take a quick break here. It will be Morgan Evans, Brandon Insikpong taking our place moving forward here on Grandstand Court. Thank you guys again for joining us. They'll be on shortly.